Ave Maria. At that time, Jesus spoke this parable to his disciples. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. He who finds it, hides it, and in his joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. When he finds a single pearl of great price, he goes and sells all that he has and buys it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net cast into the sea that gathered in fish of every kind. When it was filled, they hauled it out, and sitting down on the beach, they gathered the good fish into vessels and threw away the bad. So will it be at the end of the world. The angels will go out and separate the wicked from among the just, and will cast them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and the gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all these things? They said to him, Yes. And he said to them, So then, every scribe instructed in the kingdom of heaven is like a householder who brings forth from his storeroom things new and old. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our blessed Lord spoke in parables because of the opposition he was experiencing from the scribes and the Pharisees. He had come to preach the truth. And when the truth was not being embraced, he did not cease to preach the truth but rather he adopted a different manner of teaching it. And he chose parables. By these stories, those who were well disposed could discover the meaning of what he said. And those who were ill disposed, though they heard it, it would not add to their condemnation. In the parables, he speaks of the kingdom of heaven which is the church. It is the church on earth to which we belong. And in the last um, parable that he spoke today, the kingdom of heaven is like a net, a drag net cast into the sea. It gathers fish of every kind. So he tells us that the kingdom here on earth contains both good and bad alike. But in the other two parables, he speaks about the value of the kingdom, the value of the church, the value of he himself, who is head of the church, and, of course, the value, the importance of truth. In the first, where he speaks about the treasure hidden, here we have a laborer, who has no other expectation than to do his task and to be paid for his labor. But whilst he is doing this, and there must have been some um, care in what he did, he was um, meticulous, he was digging and he discovered the treasure. Immediately he recognized its worth. He's willing to sell everything he has so he can possess the field. But more clearly is the parable about the merchant. Whereas the the man in the field comes across the treasure unexpectedly, in the case of the merchant, he is an expert. He is searching for pearls. And so he has the eye for the pearl. He understands what makes the pearl precious. And what does he do? 
We're told he discovered, he found the single pearl of great price. And immediately all the other pearls that he has become of little use to him. It doesn't mean that they've lost their value. It just means that compared with this single pearl, they are of no value. And so we can ask ourselves, what is this pearl to which our Lord refers? The pearl is small. It's, it has a certain luster about it. It's something that can be easily hidden. In the book of the Apocalypse, we're told that each of the 12 gates of the city was a pearl, a great pearl. And so what is this pearl? What is it that will allow us to enter into the city of God? And the answer is truth. Truth is one and singular, as indeed the pearl is. This is this truth that our, to which our Lord refers to under the form of a pearl consists in what? Well, essentially in he himself, who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. When the rich young man came to our Lord, he said, good master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Keep the commandments, responded the Lord, which says he. And the Lord re reiterated um, the second tablet. Thou shalt not kill, commit adultery, etc. And the young man responded, but kept all of these. What more do I need? And the Lord told him the truth. If you wish to be perfect, go sell everything you have. Give to the poor, you'll have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. To follow Christ means to embrace all of the difficulties of his life and indeed our own. It means to face contradiction and rejection and so on in this world. And we're told he went away sad because he was a man of great wealth. Well, we have, we have here the merchant who also has great wealth but he's found this one pearl and he's willing to sell everything to possess it. He wanted to possess the truth. He wanted to know Christ. And we go to St. Paul's letter to the Philippians in the third chapter, where he says, I'm a Hebrew of Hebrews, a Benjamite, circumcised on the eighth day. I followed the law, I was zealous, beyond my, my, my contemporaries. And he says, yet I consider all of this as dung, as rubbish, compared to the supreme knowledge of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. He was willing to forego everything that he had. The law, which is true, the prophets, which are true. They are true, but they are not the fullness of truth. The pearl is, Christ is the fullness of truth. And to possess Christ is to possess everything that is true. We live in a world of relativism, and we hear it being said that all religions are pleasing to God. Well, this is nonsense. How can things, religions, ideas, ideologies that contradict each other. They can't all be truth, and therefore they cannot be pleasing to God, God who is truth. So we must beware of these strange statements. The truth of the matter is that no one, our Lord tells us, no one can come to the Father except through me. He makes no exceptions, no one can come to the Father except through me. I am the way, the only way to truth and life. And we read elsewhere that there is no other way by which we can be saved. 
Only one name has been given to us by which we may be saved. Our Lord is the truth, and of this we must be convinced. For if we are convinced of this, we will be ready to sacrifice everything. And as St. Paul says, that nothing can compare to the supreme joy, privilege of knowing Christ Jesus and he crucified. Let us pray in our day that the truths of the gospel and the teachings of the church which Christ founded might be proclaimed with confidence and with fidelity, with honesty, and above all with charity, so that in this world of darkness, the one light, the light which is placed on the candle stand, might shine in the darkness, and that it might lead all of us, poor banished children of Eve, into the bosom of our eternal Father. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Santa Maria.